just have a short psalm this morning from Psalm 91. Because you have made the Lord your refuge and the Most High your habitation, no evil will befall you, nor shall affliction come near your dwelling. For God will give you, give the angels charge over you, to guard you all your ways. Upon their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. Our gospel, oh, gospel acclamation. Alleluia. Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia. Our gospel according to Matthew, the fourth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. He fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, and afterwards he was famished. The tempter came and said to him, I'm going to read this the way the Greek actually is a better translation. Since you are the Son of God, command those, these stones to become loaves of bread. But Jesus answered, it is written, one does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, Since you are the Son of God, throw yourself down. For it is written, He will command his angels concerning you, and on their hands they will bear you up, so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him, Again it is written, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. And he said to him, All these I will give you if you fall down and worship me. Jesus said to him, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil left him, and suddenly angels came and waited on him. Now when Jesus heard that John had been arrested, he withdrew to Galilee. He left Nazareth and made his home in Capernaum by the lake in the territory of Zebulun and Naphtali, so that what had been spoken through the prophet Isaiah might be fulfilled. Land of Zebulun, land of Naphtali, on the road by the sea, across the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles, the people who sat in darkness have seen a great light. And for those who sat in the region and shadow of death, light has dawned. From that time, Jesus began to proclaim, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. As he walked by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who was called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. And he said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fish for people. Immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went from there, he saw two other brothers, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, in the boat with their father Zebedee, mending their nets, and he called them. Immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him. Jesus went throughout Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness among the people. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. So last week, the beginning, sort of the beginning of Epiphany, but um, baptism of our Lord, we heard the voice from heaven saying, this is my son, the beloved, with whom I am well pleased. This week, the Spirit leads Jesus, the Spirit leads Jesus into the wilderness. Not Not a week later, not after packing a bag and planning, but right after he has been confirmed in his identity by God the Father in his baptism. He's not lost. He's not being punished for something he's done wrong. He has been led into the wilderness by the Holy Spirit for a purpose, to be tempted or tested by the devil. Is he ready for the mission entrusted to him? He has the credentials and the authority for this mission. We've heard his Davidic ancestry and his birth narrative this Christmas season. He's been worshipped by wise men and shepherds and recognized as God's son in his baptism. Throughout the scriptures, the wilderness represents a place of preparation, a place to wait for God's next move, a place of learning to trust in God's mercy. 
For 40 days and nights, Jesus remains in the wilderness without food, getting ready for what comes next. So, who else can, can name a wilderness story? 40 day, how, many, how many days and nights did Noah and his family spend in the ark? And, do, and then, well, they spent, it, they spent more than that, but it rained for how long? 40 days and 40 nights. And what about Moses on Mount Sinai as he was inscribing the words of God's covenant for the Israelites? He was gone for 40 days. How many nights and days did the prophet Elijah fast in the desert before receiving a new commission from God? Just, yeah. It's very symbolic. And how many years did the Israelites wander in the wilderness as they prepared to arrive in the promised land? 40. 40 years. And then uh, Lent starts a little bit later uh, this year than last, but February 22nd on Ash Wednesday, we will join with other Christians journeying through the season of Lent following the life of Jesus as he faces his mission and takes up the cross. The season of Lent lasts 40, 40 days, because you don't count Sundays, if that ever confuses anyone. It's 40 days, not counting Sundays. But here we are, before we get to Lent, we're in the season of Epiphany. The readings reveal Jesus as the true Son of God. But we can't skip Lent and go straight to, from Epiphany to Easter, the lessons learned on the journey must also be claimed, along with the gift of grace and salvation. If we skip to the end, grace and forgiveness become kind of meaningless. So let's go back to the desert. The devil takes advantage of Jesus' hunger and tries to entice his opponent to seek out security and supply more than his share of food by turning stones into loaves of bread. But Jesus knows who he's talking to. He refuses to wipe out the discipline of his wilderness time by conjuring up food. And as we will see, what happens in the wilderness does not stay in the wilderness. Before long, he will feed thousands in the wilderness with just a few loaves and some fish, and he will teach his disciples to pray to God for their daily bread. Next, the tempter challenges Jesus to demonstrate his identity as God's son and his immunity to the laws of nature. Throw yourself down, says the tester. God's angels will catch you. Similar to hearing that illness and disease is no obstacle to any true believer, as some preachers may preach, if you believe enough, you will be healed. Our faith is tested by the implications of those words. Jesus chose to claim his identity as Emmanuel, God with us and remain subject to the laws of nature, just as we all are. The wilderness is a place of preparation. Jesus refuses to take advantage of his relationship to God by hurling himself down from the heights of the temple. But at the end of his earthly ministry, he endures the taunts of others on the cross, trusting God's power to the end, even on the heights of that Roman cross. And finally, He's tempted to simply secure the glory of political leadership without going through the mission God has put before him to reveal God's love for the world. Jesus knows the kingdoms will one day be his, but if he takes the kingdoms now, before his time, he could get revenge on Herod's family for the suffering of his people and every toddler in Bethlehem and the families that attempted to defend them when Herod sent his soldiers to kill all the boys under the age of two. Jesus chooses to live in the present, even as he knows the end of the story, in the wilderness. He turns down the devil's offer of political leadership over the kingdoms of the world. Then he goes on to fulfill his mission, offering the kingdom of the heavens to all who follow him in the way of righteousness. The temptation is not that food, power, and leadership are inherently wrong, but rather that they can be used for the wrong ends or at the wrong time. This is the wrong time. Because life happens in the living of it. 
The journey through Lent is necessary to get to the other side of Easter. The devil is opening up the possibility for Jesus to jump ahead before the right time, claiming his identity, without bringing the rest of the world with him. Since you are the Son of God, why don't you just skip over all the work and go straight to claiming your identity? But life and identity is revealed in the living of it. Jesus lives out his true identity by revealing God's love and mercy to the world. And we face a similar challenge. The tester says to us, and it's very subtle, since you are a child of God, baptized and freed from sin by God's grace, why worry about living into the discipline of the wilderness? Just remember you are forgiven and forget the suffering of others. Do things your way. You know God loves you and will be there for you. Skip to Easter. Forget Lent. Just be happy knowing you belong to God and the heck with the rest of the world. It is subtle, that temptation. Is that how we live out our God-intended life? Or are we called to plod along, forgiving those who wrong us, sacrificing our own will for the benefit of others, living our life being present in the midst of hardship, trusting that God is in the midst of our living, not just in the end result. Is our temptation, our test, to rejoice that we are a child of God, saved by grace, and then claim God's grace for ourselves without walking with others into that grace? Life happens in the living of it. We are becoming who we really are, children of God, living for Christ in the midst of all our relationships. In living into grace, love, and mercy, we find our true selves. And we're not alone. Finally, the promise of the gospel is that the one who is with you always, even to the end of the age, has already gone ahead of us, even to the most forsaken places of the wilderness. Christ meets us in, this most, in the most difficult places in our lives. No place is so desolate or distant or challenging that Jesus has not already been there. No test or temptation is so great that Jesus has not already overcome it. Christ claimed his path, his mission to save all the world, so that we are free to claim our true identity as children of God. Let us pray. Lord, help us to claim our identity with you as we journey in life, in the living of it, bringing your light to all the corners of our day and to others in our day-to-day -day living. Amen.